Thank you, my lords. Um, and I rise to speak particularly to Amendment 8 and uh, 56 um, in the name of the noble lady Baroness um, Scott of Needham Market, um, to which I attach my name, although I will also offer my support particularly to Amendment 9 uh, from the noble lord Lord Lucas and backed by the noble lady Baroness Boycott about connecting people with nature, because it's clearly very much connected to 8 and 56. Now, in introducing uh, this amendment, the noble lady, Baroness Scott, um, focused on the need to win support for this bill by allowing people to access the nature. I'd also very much like to focus on the public health elements and the fact that we now have increasing awareness, and I'd give particular credit to many, many campaigners over the years and many researchers who've helped us to understand that whether it comes to the human microbiome, whether it comes to mental health, uh, whether it comes to general well-being, uh, exposure to nature, involvement in nature, being in nature is good for people's health. And the noble lady, Baroness Scott, was talking about access to small spaces. Um, I'm going to talk much larger, larger and much more broadly, and I do fear perhaps that I'm going to um, scare the horses a little here, but I want to draw noble lord's attention to the degree, the desire for access to nature that does exist out there and put it to your to your Lordship's house, that we very much need to create more space because there's a push for very great openness. And so in talking about that, I'm going to refer and offer my support to something that's known as the Right to Roam campaign. Now, this highlights that in England, 92 per cent of the countryside and 97 per cent of rivers are not accessible to the public. We often talk about these overcrowded islands and how difficult it is for people to get to open space. Well, you know, there are some parts of these islands that are not very crowded at all. Now, what the Right to Roam campaign is doing is calling for an extension to the Countryside and Rights of Way Act so that people will have much broader, easy access to open space. Hundreds of thousands of acres of woodland, meadows, rivers and their banks. Now, the 2000 Countryside and Rights of Way Act gave access to 8% of England. That is mountain, moorland, commons and some downland heath. Now, by nature of the kind of nature of those spaces, they are, tend to be very remote. They're not easy to access, particularly with our extraordinary lack of public transport in rural areas. In fact, they're almost totally inaccessible to people who don't have access to a car. So there is a real postcode lottery, um, a real clear inequality, unfairness in our current arrangements. So the proposal from the Right to Roam campaign is that all woodlands, all downland and all greenbelt is opened up, not just to walkers, but to camping, to kayaking, to swimming and to climbing. And for those who might like to explore this idea further, I can very strongly recommend the Book of Trespass by Nick Hayes, which really sets out the case for this very clearly. Now, you might think this is the uh, radical green saying radical green, uh, green ideas again, but what I'm talking about exists in Norway, in Sweden, Estonia, and in Scotland. This was a common law, long established right, which has subsequently largely been codified in law. And I stress that these are rights in all of these countries contingent on responsibilities. Essentially, our countryside code um, extended to reflect if people are making broader use the extra responsibilities they need to have to keep the land safe, to protect nature, to protect other people, to protect other people's privacy and rights. And I think it's really important to see how this is not just a question of access, but it's also a question of changing relationship. At the moment, for most people, visiting nature is like going to a museum. It's a special trip that you have to make to a special place far away very often, um, something you can't do very often. What we're talking about is embedding in people's lives the opportunity to make nature part of their everyday life, part of the environment that is accessible to them. So I have to, as a Sheffield Green Party member, refer at this point to the Kinder Mess Trespass that helped to create some of the basic rights that we have today. Um, people were not granted those rights. People had to win those rights. And I would stress to your Lordship House that there is now a very strong um, and growing campaign to get more rights. And I would suggest 
to the noble lord the minister that acknowledging that desire needs to be written on the face of the bill, needs to be written as a government responsibility, as a statutory responsibility. Um, and then, then you can start negotiating about how much is allowed. Um, and I'm not expecting you to say, yes, I entirely accept everything that uh, was just proposed, but let's start the conversation. <laughs>